Hello and welcome guys to our channel. It's your girl Precious. And it's your boy Roger. Yes guys, today we have come with an interesting video where we are going to be talking about the differences between the Ugandan culture and the Zimbabwean culture. We are going to show you things that guys you might have not known. So if you are excited about this video, make sure you smash the like button, turn your notifications on, subscribe if you are new here. Let's get into the video. So guys, we have about six things that bring out the culture differences between Uganda and Zimbabwe. So we are going to discuss one by one as a conversation. It's not like we are comparing that this country is better than this one. We're just trying to show you guys the culture differences between Uganda and Zimbabwe. So let's start about the issue of uh, staying at parents' house even if you're old. <laughs> yeah. How do you do it in Yeah. In, in fact, in Uganda, if, uh, Uganda has over 40 plus million people and it's a small country. So because of that, most of the families, when we grow up as boys, mostly boys, we talk about boys, we, we rent, we go out of uh, parents' homes, we rent. At what so, age do you um, Mostly when you finish school, okay, uh, 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 immediately when you finish school, you, you go out and what? And rent your own apartment, your own rentals, and start life from there. In fact, even if you are not married, it is not common to find many youths who have finished the school and they are still staying in their parents' homes here in Uganda. And it's also hard to find in Uganda youth who is saying is doing nothing. Most of the youths here are hard workers and they're hustlers. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how it is in Zim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in Zimbabwe, I'm actually feel shy. Because in Zimbabwe, you can actually find a 25 to 30 year old still staying at their parents house and others even marry and bring their wives at home so that's one of the different disguise that as you heard in uganda someone after finishing school they start hustling they leave their parents house they start working and renting but in zimbabwe it's a different case i i feel like in zimbabwe youths are more comfortable they are not ready yet more i'm not saying all of them mm. but a percentage of them are not ready yet to move on to start their own life i don't know if it's running from responsibility or what but in zimbabwe you can find a 30 year old a 35 year old you can find actually a 20 20 25 26 year old staying at their parents house is very normal so that's one of the differences okay. so we are going to move to the second difference guys uh, which is uh, eating habits. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start on this one. Okay. In Zimbabwe, by the way, it's a, I saw it's a problem here. He's going to explain to you. In Zimbabwe, if you buy your food, mm -hmm. for example, you are in a rush, you go maybe to chicken in, you want an ice cream, mm -hmm. you can actually buy your ice cream, you walk eating it. Mm -hmm. You can buy your chips, your lays, you can open them, you're eating, you're walking, maybe talking to a friend, you're rushing somewhere. But if you have time, you can actually sit properly and eat. Mm. But we don't see it as a, as a problem that someone buys their chips, maybe you buy ice cream, you buy your what, and you eat while it's walking. It's not a problem. Now, in Uganda... Yeah, in Uganda, by the way, we, we, I saw it in Zim, also as she has explained. So I found it so strange when i saw people walking while eating in uganda it's not common we know we are disciplined in such a way that when you buy something before you reach home you don't start eating it or even before if you find some area where you can sit down or maybe you don't have anywhere to sit down but at least you stand up somewhere and you eat you finish eating and then you walk away <laughs> or you have to reach home so I found also my partner just trying to train her that discipline ah, here in that Uganda. That is the hardest thing, guys. <laughs> Me, I was used to buying my things. Even buying a corn, a maize meal that is yeah. maybe boiled or what. You have to reach home to eat. For what now? <laughs> We always quarrel on that because me, if I buy something, I want to eat it right away sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And you can't eat walking, you have to sit. Sometimes you don't want to sit, you're in a rice. You have to eat when you reach home. <laughs> I saw that except maybe if you have your own car, you can actually eat in your mm. car. That's the second 
differences in culture between Uganda and Zimbabwe. We hope guys you are learning. <laughs> so the third thing we are going to talk about is uh, differences in food. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about uh, things like uh, things we, you don't eat mm -hmm. in Uganda and mm -hmm. things we eat in Zimbabwe we consider normal, mm -hmm. but you in, in Uganda you don't eat. Yeah, in fact we start with chicken legs. <laughs> the first time I visited Zimbabwe, I found out that you, you guys, if you're watching us from Zimbabwe, you guys, you are eating chicken legs and it's one of the, the, the best parts <laughs> <laughs> on, on, the legs. on chicken <laughs> and the intestines. We eat you, legs, the head, the, head, hey. the intestines, <laughs> the, the what else? Uh, the only thing the we head. don't eat is the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> so, here in Uganda, truthfully, legs, chicken legs, head, intestines are for dogs. Wow. Like, we throw them away, we don't eat them. And I found it strange when I found out that in Zim, those are the best parts they eat. I was like, wow. And we fought with my friend she wanted as we were buying chicken here in the beginning she wanted the chicken legs that buy chicken you know we slaughter here in uh, such that i take off my chicken legs <laughs> i told you i told her my friend <laughs> here police will come <laughs> guys that's the hardest thing by the way I always felt pain. Even now, I still feel pain that when I go to buy chicken, the good thing with Uganda, because of competition, they have the best customer service. Mm -hmm. So you can actually buy a chicken, they slaughter for you, they clean it for you, they, they pack it, they remove everything, you just go with the chicken. Yeah. But, you know, I see them throwing a dish full of chicken heads, feet, <laughs> intestines, Everything they throw away, I'm like, wow, because in Zimbabwe we eat everything, guys. Mm -hmm. People actually pack legs alone. You can actually buy gizzards, you can actually buy uh, heads, you can actually buy a pack of heads. In this time, you can actually buy a pack of intestines. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You enjoy with the family. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the culture differences. In Uganda, it's, 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 it's not normal. Mm -hmm. By the way, someone might think you're actually mentally disturbed <laughs> when they see you eating those things. But in Zimbabwe, very perfect. I'm sure in other countries as well, they also eat chicken legs. Yeah. If you eat chicken legs, you think like mm -hmm. it's only Uganda, you, you eat, also put it in the comment yeah, section. Yeah. But for now, let's move to the fourth thing, uh, the mm -hmm. culture differences. We are going to talk about greeting. Yeah. So in, in Zimbabwe, by the way, I'm sure in every country, mm -hmm. there is that respect you give to your elders. When you're greeting an elder, mm -hmm. you know, maybe your visitors at home, you kneel down, you greet them. Mm -hmm. In Zimbabwe, the culture is there. People knew that when greeting elders. But as you know, the 21st century, the new generation of kids, we are no longer taking it that much serious, by the way. We are no longer taking it that much serious. Yes, we can kneel down, but sometimes it's not a must. Whether you find someone, okay, you find someone in town, your in-laws in town, you don't have to kneel down in town to greet your in-laws. You just greet them, how are you, mama? You know, with some respect and humbleness. But I don't know here in Uganda is going to explain to you. Yeah, in fact, I found some similarity uh, between Uganda and Zimbabwe on greeting because other cultures that have, have been lucky to visit other countries that you find that out that kneeling is really a miracle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you find someone kneeling, uh, it's a, a miracle. Mm -hmm. They just greet how I am fine and mm -hmm. then they go. Even in their la local language and the local greeting. But mm -hmm. Uh, in Uganda, when I talk about Uganda, you find that mostly uh, when you're greeting elders, people who are older than you, you have to kneel down, most importantly, ladies. And if you are greeting your in-laws, your, you know, your relative, the relatives of the, 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 the what? The, the, your husband, you have to really kneel down. That is a respect that... In fact, they take it so, so, so much important that, mm. ah, this woman has what? Has manners. Respect. He has respect, has manners. So, of course, 21st century, it is going out mostly in the city. But when you go back in the village, it is yeah, taken so take much so important and so serious. So, greeting, kneeling down here as a woman, as a lady, a it is... It must it's important here it's important sure yeah i saw because when i came here 
when I'm going maybe to buy something, mm -hmm. there are some small ladies. They kneel down for me. I'm like, wow. You know, I even feel uncomfortable seeing someone go, not just bending. They go down to the ground and greet you. They have so much respect. But you know, in Zimbabwe, it's there, but not much common. That even if you find your in-laws in town, by the way, mm -hmm. you meet with your in-laws, you mm -hmm. go down. Yeah. It, down it, to the ground. In fact, in Zimbabwe, what I saw me say, Mamkase. In Zimbabwe, by the way, you can actually bend a bit. Like, just to show that you wanted to kneel down, but you don't go to the ground. But here, you have to really go to the ground. So now we are going to move to the fifth culture difference between Zimbabwe and Uganda. Let's talk about transportation system okay. here in Uganda. Okay, in, in Uganda, the fastest transport system is Boda Boda. Boda Boda is motorbikes. You know Uganda is a bit congested as a country since it's small and Kampala has a lot of people uh, when it comes to, for example, even if you're going from a distance of uh, 10 or 15, 20 minutes, you can spend hours before you reach in the city. Yeah. So you find that most people, even those who have cars, they can park them on filling stations and they get a border, a border border, that's a motorbike to go faster to their destination yeah. because sometimes they might be late mm -hmm. uh, in, in congestion. So our fastest means of transport, of course we have others, but our fastest here is Boda Boda. That's, and I, I, I saw that it was so hard for my wife <laughs> <laughs> to adapt, but eh, you, you know, know. It's not easy. Yeah. I'm sure that's why in, in Uganda you have a short life expectancy than Zim. People, yeah. they don't grow up to the oldest, <laughs> oldest age. People, they, they lack exercise because you can see someone just from here to there, they, can, they are willing to pay 1,000 shillings yeah. to, to be dropped by a border border. Mm. But in Zim, guys, we don't have motorcycles. Mm. We have buses. We have taxis. Those are combis. We also have um, shika shika, people with their small cars that they use for transportation. Shika shika. Mm. So if you want the transport, you better go to the bus station or to where the taxis rank. You see, that's where you find it. Then you board from there. But here, anywhere you find a border, if you are just moving from your house to see a border border guy, you can actually board and go wherever you want. Yeah, and it has no class. Everyone can board the yeah. border, border here. By the way, everyone yeah. can board because that's the only way you can go wherever you want very fast. Because if you want to use your, your car and you're not calculative enough, you always be late. So guys, now we are going to move to the last point. We are going to talk about hustling in both countries. So how, how uh, is hustling in Uganda? I also talk about Zimbabwe. Yeah, we are hustlers. That's the truth. Of course, other countries are hustling. But we are hustlers. You find 10 year, 15 year, 20 year, 25 year, they are really working hard because the competition is high. If you don't work so hard, if you don't hustle so hard, yeah. trust me, you're going to be eaten. And <laughs> uh, you know, even our working hours, you find that work starts early in the morning, as early as six, as early as seven, as early as even five. But we end up, you know, most of the shops, even if you go around the midnight, you find the shops open and they are ready to serve you. So yeah. that's how hustling is in Uganda. Shops don't close in the evening just by eight or maybe by seven. No, here we hustle up to some, some, some places, by the way, they work all day and all night. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, in Uganda, you can't look for food that you say, ah, it is too night, it is still it's night, maybe uh, I can't get food. No, here you can get food and be fresh at night. Yeah, <laughs> it's, by the way, hustling, I, I feel like in every country people hustle, yeah. but the level of hustling mm. might be different. Mm. In Zimbabwe, people hustle. Yeah. In Harare, people hustle. In uh, Mutare, where I come from, people hustle. Mm -hmm. But the hustling I saw here is a bit higher than how people hustle in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. In Zimbabwe, you can actually find someone who is 25, 28, 30, and they are sitting at home, they are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. You ask them, they will tell you there are no jobs. They will tell you, I'm still applying. Mm. They will tell you a lot of things. But I found out in Uganda, 
even a 20 year old or 17 year old you will find them selling they can either fry ground nuts they move with them in, in Zimbabwe we call them zungu they move and sell they break a soli that is maize meal they move and sell no matter how young they are people are not resting here and also in terms of operating hours it's different in Zim in Zim shops they normally close five some even four, four o'clock, mm. five o'clock, six o'clock. Mm. Those that even close later, I'm sure around seven or eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But here in Uganda, mm. you can actually see a, a shop open 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Shops, some of them are still open. Yeah. So the level of hustling here is a bit and, high. And, and in fact, in Uganda, what I saw, because I visited Zim and some other countries, you, you find they have lunch time, mm. you know. Uh, when you go in a shop, when they are their lunch, you might not find them. They are already eating. But in Uganda, people eat at their work. Yeah. Like they are ready to serve you. At, they don't time. have a rest. Maybe this is lunch hour rest. No, that is not here. <laughs> they serve you any time, anyway. Mm. So, guys, those are the culture differences you get. Also, before I forget. Yeah. In terms of marriages in, in Zim and in Uganda, mm. is there any difference that because in Zimbabwe mm. the process is when you want to get married as a lady, mm. you you show your, your boyfriend to your aunts, mm -hmm. uh, after showing them to your aunts, the aunts tell your parents, uh, you go for Lobola Day, that is the bride price day, then you after that you wed. In Uganda, is yeah, the process yeah, different? I'm sure the process is almost the same, but the way it's done, mm is different yeah the, the process as you have explained because auntie then parents then wedding that's the that's the system but the way it is now done I yeah do you also pay like bride price yeah we do maybe people buy things instead of bringing money only people have to buy things yeah yeah and in uganda is exaggerated <laughs> when it comes to buying things yeah, it's exaggerated most of the time. So No, yeah. it's okay guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you you like you saw the differences between Zimbabwe and Uganda. If you are coming from another country, put it in the comment section. If you feel like there is something that we do in Zim, yeah. we do in Uganda that in your country maybe you don't even do, maybe you do also better than both countries, mm. put in the comment section. Don't forget to like subscribe if you are new here join the family guys we really appreciate your support see you in our next lit video we love you mm -hmm.